My name is Paul Cannibal. Um, known to known, no, known to others as the legendary and the first black player to play for Chelsea Football Club. Um, with my own story, um, I'm breaking through at Chelsea at the age of 20, and it was a, a very difficult time. As a child, and gold was to be a professional footballer. This is something that my mum or should I say my mother, didn't kind of accept and didn't find it was as a career. Um, but I pursued this and this is all I wanted to be. Skipping along, um, signing for Chelsea at the age of 20 was the greatest day of my life. Um, it was a dream. It was absolutely wonderful. Um, to prove to a lot of people wrong how good as well as how good I was and breaking into to the reserves I found it really kind of easy I was scoring goals and making goals which probably got me um, into the first team um, after four months and that's when it came um, I was called up I was a substitute for my first game which was against Crystal Palace and I was a substitute and um, as all youngsters are anxious just want to get on the pitch and show what they can do and the first half started and where it was tight it was probably probably even um, and the game was nil nil but I was there talking to myself and saying gosh if I get on there I know I can beat that defender and I can score I can make goals that's all I wanted to do um, we went in Obviously at half time nil nil, second half started same way, still tight, still even. And I'm just looking at the manager, you know, I mean giving him the eye, just letting him know, come on and put me on. Um it had to be the last fifteen minutes that's when he told me to get warmed up. And I thought, yeah man, I'll be ready. Um when I started to warm up is when I started to hear this racial abuse start shouting at me and I thought, Gus these are way supporters, you know what I mean? They're trying to put me off. I weren't having it. But the shouting got, it got louder and the racism got, it got worse. And I, I was kind of shocked with what I was hearing. And that's when I turned around and that's when I was shocked because it was my own fans, Chelsea fans, that were racially abusing me and racially taunting me. And I couldn't believe this. Here I am, a professional club like Chelsea, and the fans, majority, not all my fans, were racially shouting disgusting words. Um, I remember just getting on the pitch for the last remaining 10 minutes, and I quite honestly don't know what I did. I certainly was in a daze. I must have got the ball, but gave the ball back. I didn't do anything that was extra or sparkled. Um, all I know is that when the whistle was blown by the referee, I headed straight to the change room and sat there in the corner. Um, still amazed, still dazed. Um, I think the players knew that as well because they couldn't even ask me, to be honest, how I felt. Um, and, and that weren't that they didn't care, it was just that it was obvious. Um, the manager, which John Neal, put guts to him because he gave me my opportunity and it was a very difficult time for him and for me as a black player for him to even give me the chance. He said to me, Paul, I don't know how you're feeling right now, but these same ignorant people are the ones who are playing your wages. Um, this is one to say I started to think and it was a case of I 
teammates and not teammates but colleagues and friends and cousins telling me why am I continuing to play at a club that they don't want even black players but it's not about the club it was just ignorant fans that didn't understand where I was coming from um, and at the base the basis of it all it was I wasn't going to allow these ignorant people to spoil my dream this is what I lived for from the age of five this continued it continued for a good while um, we're talking about nearly two and a half to three years um, everywhere I went my own fans racially abused me even if I scored and we won one nil it was counted as it wasn't a goal because the black boy or the nig nog as they would say <laughs> scored um, you can imagine when scoring against you on your debut and how much it meant because we needed all the points at the time Chelsea was lingering at the bottom and we needed to survive because I don't think if we went down any further we would have folded the club would have folded apparently so yes we came through that season and it was difficult um, for the next season went through same things playing away playing at home I think where it might change when we play there uh, which we call now your milk cup now I think it's capital cup but at the time it was just a league cup and I played we played Sheffield Wednesday who was always a side that we always battled with, well with and was playing away um, it's a day that was recognition for me because I was meeting my dad for the very first time as he left me when I was two years old so here I was in Sheffield I knew I was being sub I was about to meet my dad later on in the day um, coming from the hotel nerves is all buzzing in my stomach and yes we got to the ground and kickoff started I'm sitting down number 12 and in a matter of 20 minutes we was 3 nil down I mean 3 nil down and as far as I'm concerned, a club like Sheffield Wednesday, I don't think we can come back from that. But um, they say football has its graces and it's amazing what can happen, believe me, and that's in 45 minutes. So second half came out, I come on straight away for replacing Colin Lee, I, I believe, who got injured. Del Jasper went to centre half and kick off. Well, I remember how it went. It was kick back to Joey Jones, former um, Welsh international, and he just lobbed the ball and it's flicked on from Kerry Dixon, then from David Speedy, and I gathered the ball and put it in the net, and that is, was in the 11 seconds, that's how quick that goal was, and it started an uproar, a good, it started the climb back, should I say, or the battle, because from then, Every attack we done, it looked like we was going to score, and we did. 3-2, um, Kerry made it 3-all, Mickey Thomas made it 3-2, and Paul Carnival made it 4-3, I got the next one. So you can just imagine how the crowd was roaring, and I mean, I know, I heard, shall I say, the story that some of the Ch Chelsea supporters had already left because they saw 3 nil down, but those who stayed, what a magnificent game they they obviously you know mean saw um they did eventually come back for all um but um from there i believe i was in, um yes one of the teammates or one should i say not teammate one of the lads now for chelsea that was now called upon in his name was chaired in amongst the crowd um yes meeting my dad as well not forgetting that was nervous and I met him in the bar and I can I I didn't imagine how he looked all I knew is that everybody kept telling me you look like your father Vernon man Vernon man and it was true I do look everything like him and we have this relationship I mean he's been good you know I mean dad is there I respect him he's my he's my father um, and I'm not forgetting my mama because she brought me up and it was difficult for her to bring up two kids back in the time in 1975 very difficult time.
But yes, I'm here. Um, and the reason why I'm here because I still work. I have to say I had to retire at an early age, um, at the early age of 25 years old. Um, why I say I'm, I'm here now because um, it was a difficult time for me. Um, I live for football, love football, and to now know that I couldn't play it no more, it was hard to take. Um, with that, I went downhill, and, and considerably. I mean downhill, where I, I took hold of drugs and look, let that control me. Um, people now, real friends, real family knew how I was and knew that this wasn't me. But it, at the end, it was only me that could help myself, um, which I did. I went to rehab, cleaned myself up, come back out. And at that same time, I had got cancer, which was another knockback. Um, and that took me, you know, it took me well, that cancer. I got to have it, I didn't expect it, I didn't know about it. And I still took it lightly the first time. And I've had it three times. It was a case the first time I nearly died. That's when I realised how serious this is. Um, whilst that was going on, I was invited back to Chelsea in 19, 2004 and went back the centenary year, I believe. Um, I missed the coach that went for the centenary dance and was a bit upset that they invited me and didn't wait. But um, everything was, you know, excused until they, I came back and I was asked to pull um, if you would like to talk to school kids and I couldn't understand well, what am I going to tell them that they, they don't know about me as a player because I was hardly even, I wasn't even born um, they started and I found myself because yeah, I was talking to kids and telling them my story and it wasn't just about football, it's about growing up it's about the importance of education, you know, the importance of bullying, racism, everything. And they was listening and I was like, whoa, I was shocked. I was shocked that I, I could talk. I was shocked that people would listen. Uh, I'm asked to write or help write my autobiography, which is called Black and Blue. And um, Rick Glanville, who was the one who asked me, he's a historian at Chelsea, he helped me. And um, I honestly didn't know how this was going to turn out because I obviously um, I had to ask my mother for permission because I felt that she needed to be involved as well as my sister. And um, <laughs> yeah, I won Best Sports Book of the Year 2009. Um, I keep being told it's a must for the youngsters to read as well as anybody else. Um, I keep being told it's a, it's a book that once you read, you can't. You find it hard to put down because the next chapter comes up. You want to see what's happening. <laughs> I've not. I'm going to be really honest with you. I've not read my own book. That's the honest truth. I've not read my own book. It's a case. I think that because I know what I put in there, but I know I should probably go over and recollect memories, recollect situations um, because of the work I do now. Um, I formed a foundation which is called MTC um, motivate to change and it's to give back it's to educate inspire and inform and it's our young adults the young kids of today I still work with Chelsea and their ETF education through football and where I go around schools I also go around to prisons um, youth clubs colleges universities and I suppose by writing my autobiography it's enabled me to travel a wide where I am today, Finland. I've been now in Geneva, some Germany, India, um, and doors has opened. Um, I love what I do, I continue to do it because it gives me such a buzz as well as the kids. Um, and if they can learn something from my story and from my background, and it gives me so much joy, you know what I mean? I don't know when I will stop. I, you'll have to put me down. To be honest, um, I still love football. I love it so immensely. I can't even stop now when I when I play. I keep forgetting I'm 50. Forget that. <laughs> but um, yeah, I enjoy what I do.
Um, I love meeting people um, and um, I love speaking about my, obviously, anything about in life. Um, but the main course now is, it's about racism. It's where I thought we were going forward, it seems like two steps back and it's very difficult and this is something we don't want our kids to come through. Um, a situation happened three days ago where I was really distressed about it and it was in Serb Serbia um, with the under 21 England team and I thought it was like they were at risk. The safety, I don't understand why the referee didn't ban abandon the game. I mean we know about um, hostile fans can be but this was uh, beyond the mark where it was so risky to continue look what happened being attacked was, well don't get me wrong not just by the fans the hostility by the fans but by coaches of the serbian team coaches team that's beyond board and this is where we're looking at uefa what are they going to do um and this is where we've been asking it's so many times now how many times how many times repeatedly are they going to ignore this um my point is obviously a sternly ban, a really serious ban, and a stern fine, a really strong fine where it's going to hurt. I don't care if it's a club, I don't care if it's country, it's going to hurt them. But at the same time, this money that they find people, they find clubs, I think, well, it needs to go to organisation. It need, don't, not into back into UEFA, not back into the FA. It needs to go back into organisation who represents awareness and racism. That's to kick it out, the, the fears, um, the red card, and all the um, organisation around the world, around the country. The money needs to go back to them, so it enables and it helps enhance our youngsters to be aware or what racism is. Racism is. Um, this is my story. I hope you enjoy. Tune into my website www.paulcannaval.com. What can I say? Thank you for listening. Thank mm -hmm. you.